Now to Father Robert Sirico. He's the president of the Acton Institute here with me in the flesh. Normally we're talking remote. It's right. very nice to Good see you, Good to be here. Good to be back in the city. It is interesting, right, Father? Yeah. We had this whole political dust up and a yeah. speaker resigning. And if you think about it, a lot goes back to how much you push this Planned Parenthood vote. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, as you said, uh, you can imagine what the Pope would think. I mean, the sale of body parts is really quite a... Um, despicable uh, thing. It, it's just not something that ought to go on in a civilized society. The presence of the Pope, the dynamics, the emotional dynamics. I was in uh, the chamber during that speech and you could really feel the most spontaneous and sustained applause uh, other than the entrance was when he uh, called for the dignity of every life to be respected from the fir first Yeah, from the very himself. beginning. But, but he was choice and very, very precise in his yeah. wording. Why? Because there are a lot of Conservative Catholics who came out said you really, that was a chance for you to rail against yeah. abortion for you to. He's not a railer though. Yeah. I mean, it, it should not take anybody long to figure out where the Pope stands on abortion or marriage, all of which he affirmed. I think what he's trying to do is. Well, he didn't come out and say I'm against gay marriage. He just said it, when he started his papers, he said, "Who am I to judge?" He said so it. So nothing has changed in Catholic doctrine. No. Right? Well, first of all, he didn't say who am I to judge in relation to marriage. And to you know, that, judging gays, it, it, and of course, right. I mean, we, we have to love people. You know, that's, but people that's, immediately the reason why it became an instant mainstream media favor were, was that original. Let, statement. let me put this to you: When the Pharisees brought the woman who was caught in the act of adultery to Jesus, they thought they could test him. Why? There was something about Jesus' posture towards sinners that made them think he was kind of weak on this stuff. He was not weak on this stuff. In fact, one of the most moving and uh, compelling encounters in the gospel was and he says to this woman after all of that go and sin no more I, this pope is not on this question we can talk about him on economics because i have some problems there yeah. but on the moral questions he's firm he, he's approaching this from a whole different angle a compassionate a loving angle to show that we're not ideologues about this that we're not insensitive to people's very difficult familial situations or personal situations but we know what helps human life to flourish, and we have to be patient with people, and that's why he's generous with absolution. You know, come, the truckloads of mercy, he says. Do you think that he is anti-capitalist? So that has come up a lot. I don't know if he's anti-capitalist. I think he is in love with the poor, and I don't think he gets the economic question. I think for him, the person who is in need is the priority. And what he speaks about isn't the solution to poverty, but it's horror. And what I think we need to do is agree with him that we don't want money to be an idol. We don't want uh, unfettered markets to dictate all of our values. We need those things. I think he could do with understanding that, as he said, business is a noble vocation. It's a way to provide for the needs of the poor. Now, he has said that. I just wish he would say it a little more deeply and a little more extensively. You think he's just a product of his upbringing, where he was? Uh, not Argentine just. Argentine and a... And a very tough time. Well, you know, when he was 17 years old, 16 years old, he worked with a woman who was a communist who he liked very much. Right. He didn't buy into her communism. But later on, she was one of the mothers of the uh, the square, you know, the with the children who were disappeared. And she was later taken by the regime and dropped out of a plane. He had a great affection for this woman. And she was killed in that horrible manner. So I think he saw capitalism right. in Argentina at that time, a crony form of capitalism. And, and it started as it just like Pope John Paul said, his exposure right. as a Polish cardinal priest. Yeah. But this could be a very good experience for him, meeting people of faith here who are also business people. I think this is a reciprocal thing. We're learning from him as he's visiting the United States. Hopefully he'll learn a little bit from American spirituality as well. Yeah, I was amazed he had never been here before. Never. Never been never. here. Thank you very much.